know, we know racism is not going nowhere. I just want to say if it's not slavery, it's segregation. If it's not segregation, it's discrimination. If it's not discrimination, it's intimidation. If it's not intimidation, it's incarceration. If it's not incarceration, it's prejudice. If it's not prejudice, it's poverty. If it's not poverty, it's unemployment. If it's not unemployment, you're catching the hell at your point. And to my young people that comes from my community, please put down the pistols, pick up the pencils because another victim dies, another mother cries. Um, you um, are the president of an organization called New Order. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that organization? The New Order started in Toledo, Ohio in 1992. And obviously I was hit with a spirit from the man above. He said, this is your time to shine. This is your time to help my dad to get some results that was going on in the community and I decided to do that. And you've done that? Correct. So New Order is a national human rights organization? That is what does correct. that mean? It means we're national. We get calls throughout the country. I had a chance to go speak on the Sandra Bland case. You know, I would go there with boots on the ground, so I went out there and spoke at the jail where she was murdered and not committing suicide. And I did not leave till I spoke to someone inside their jail. And he was looking at me like, who is this guy? Where is this guy coming from? Police was everywhere. It was like SWAT team on top of the, the jailhouse. You know, they were like, where is this guy? First of all, he's bold. You know, I said, well, man, I kind of introduced myself. And then all of the national media came there and covered the press conference, letting them know I am not the only one that wants just, justice for Sandra Bland. Talk about the mission of this organization. Well, the mission is that if your rights being violated, you know, we could bring some, some legal representation. We believe in, in just, we believe in, in uh, taking cases on uh, facts only, not emotions, because when you take cases on facts, you're gonna get justice at the end of the tunnel. You know, things like that. We just feel that, you know, our people, all God's children are being mistreated in some kind of way, especially when your skin just as dark as mine. So we just want to make sure that you're being treated fairly in the United States of America. There have been a number of cases, not only in Georgia, but across the country. Can you talk about some of those cases that you guys have been involved in? Well, I was also involved in the Michael Vick case. But this is when stuff, when people take you serious. As uh, soon as I got off speaking uh, about the Michael Vick case, the IRS came to my house. And when you are here fighting for human rights, and, they, they, and when this happened, they're watching you. So you know, also when T.I. was making that bad decision when he was carrying illegal guns, they had so many community service hours, you know, to complete his, his uh, restitution. And Cobb County decided not to let him speak in the school system there. Everybody else accepted him that he could speak. I said, why not? You know, so I fought for that. You know, I took some heat on that. You know, one thing about me, you know, if God say get involved with something, I don't care about no man and woman. I focus on what he told me to do, and sometimes you ruffle some feathers. Like some of the issues that you focus on are harassment, racial profiling, the school system. Can you talk about each of those things? Well, there's a lot of racial profiling going on in the South, but not just the South. But apparently, since that we was grown, that stuff happens in Jackson, you know, Mississippi, Arkansas, Georgia, Alabama, that I've seen in the history books down here in the South. It's all in your face. If you can't see it, you're stuck on stupid. And you might be driving a nice Cadillac, they turn all the way around, get behind you, and follow you until you do something. You know, I didn't see all that. You know, just the fact that, you know, we have rights. You know, if you get stopped by the police, you have rights. You know, they, if you don't want them to search your car, you know what is the probable cause of searching your car. But they decide to do something anyway outside the rules, and they know that. You know, so we have to speak up on that. Can peaceful protests really bring about change? Because when you look at other areas in Europe, uh, you see violent protests. Um, just a couple of months ago, there was violent protests at the um, the top corporation in the world, BlackRock, mm -hmm. where they tried to burn the whole company down, mm -hmm. and and they got results. But in the United States, we've been peaceful protesting for years and we're still in the same place we were in back in the 60s. Well, I'm going to say yes and no. I'm going to say yes, I believe in peaceful protests. I'm going to say no, sometimes you got to get your point across. It's like when and Dr. King was marching in Chicago when they would start burning stuff down. You know, I disagreed on, you know, we tear up our own neighborhood, but, you know, they got some results. They took the people very seriously. We will burn down our own community. Right. 
There's no threat that's in burning true. down your own. That's true. That's the mindset of our people that we have to correct. You know, if you're going to protest, you know, go out there and protest in another neighborhood. Be nonviolent. Start affecting people in, in the pocket. You know, don't protest and boycott, you know, our stores in our own community because you got to look at it. You know, a lot of people don't have transportation. You have elderly women or, or, or men or whatever that the only place they can do is walk to the store. You know, so why are you going to boycott this particular store? We need to go somewhere is that will make them uncomfortable, period. You focus on uh, just minorities when you're fighting for um, the underserved? Or? No, we are human rights. I mean, so that means we all got children. Not black rights, white rights, your 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 human rights for right. everybody. But unfortunately, all the rights is always us. <laughs> Yeah. Most of the call, but I did receive a phone call in early 2000 where a white female was found dead inside of a jail cell, and I found out about it. Um, they went through the process, and I decided to uh, to say something about it. But the majority of the calls, even though the organization is multicultural, they know what's going on. How do you decide which cases to take on? So when I'm coming, I'm coming with facts. But if you're constantly out there, every day sacrificing you would get some results. But I seen that back in the day, but we're not doing that today. And that's why they say protests don't work. So it ain't going to work if we're not consistent. <clears throat> However, the protests only work when it impacts politicians. If Cor politicians think they're going to lose their position, that how do you square that? How do you square the work with civil rights and people in um, elected leadership? Well, I kind of explained that... Um, if I know something that they promised to do and they did not do and I found out that they do own a business in their area, you know, where they represent and thing, I would expose you. But it would be a continuous exposure, you know, consistently exposing you to get our point across. Eventually, um, people will listen. As African Americans, we're always looking to be at somebody else's table. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have to do that. We should be able to create our own table. Right. We should be able to influence both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. Correct. I don't believe we should be either. I believe we all should be independent. Correct. And we should all put the agenda together mm -hmm. and put it in front of both groups. And whatever group decides during that election cycle to support that agenda, that's the, that's the group that we should vote for. What are your thoughts on that? I agree with you 100%. During the last election for Biden, I was excited. We had the House, the Senate, the right. presidency. You had a number of things that came across um, came across as legislation. Mm -hmm. And none of it passed. <laughs> Voting rights, George Floyd Act, student loan, none of it. None of it went through. Hey, when we have power and we in these seats... We still not a part of the change. It seems like we're always begging for things, and you know it's like if we if it's not handed over to you, we're gonna be it's gonna be a problem. That. But it only took three months for them to create a hate crimes law for Asians. Hmm. I mean, they passed the Civil Rights Act years ago. Correct. And that was the last uh, significant legislation that impacted our community. Right. So. Where is our support as a community? Well, basically, is that if you're not getting out and voting and all that, really pay attention to what's going on, you're part of the problem. Period. It's unexcusable. You know, again, uh, you again, I always tell our people, go down to the Capitol and see what's going on down there. Um, if you're not um, woke on what's going on, all these bills are being passed, um, you're not a part of the problem because stuff is being passed every day at that Capitol down here, downtown Georgia, and we're complaining about it, but if you're not doing your research, you know, it's just gonna go right by you. Tell me this, Gerald. New Order also monitors death mm -hmm. in the jail. Correct. Why? Why not? It goes on daily. You know, something just happened uh, last week where a young man died because of the bed buzz, and he was only in the jail for a misdemeanor. It doesn't matter what you're in jail for, because you are innocent until you're proven guilty, but he was just in there for a misdemeanor. That's a good lost point. his life. That's a great point. You know? So uh, we have to monitor these jails. Me, uh, I exposed the Cobb County Jail 
back in 2003 where the inmates was complaining about the cleanliness. Now I know a jail ain't no hotel, but you still have rights when you're behind the walls. And it was a complaint about how they was being treated, you know, how their rights was being violated inside the jail. So I had a protest in front of the jail and said, I do realize that jail's not a hotel, but you know, they are human because again, you are going under their rules, but at the same time, you can't treat these people real bad. And so I'm always on top of these jail situations throughout metro Atlanta area. What is it going to take for us as, as African-American or Afro people to come together and realize our value? We can develop our own economies. We can, we can develop our own communities. When is that going to happen? We got to start trusting each other. We have to start trusting each other and show unity financially. And unfortunately, we don't do that these days. But that's easy to say. When is it going to happen? Uh, and how is it going to happen? Well, first of all, we got to start having more meetings around town meeting and coming together besides a sporting event. <laughs> you know, we come together for that, but we need to start having some kind of community meetings to show people, hey, we got to trust in us and uh, we, we can do this. But... We don't do that. Do you think it's the programming, um, the music, the TV, mm -hmm. the movies, the news? Mm -hmm. You know what we see on the right, news right, every day. Right. It's very distracting stuff out there. Social media can be distracting. You know, the news. some people uh, want to know it's very distracting because they don't tell the real news. They're all about ratings. You know, they will put out information. Like if I have a, I want to say a press conference, they put out false information. You know, so they have something to do with it. That's a high hurdle. Yeah. That's a high is. hurdle. So we have to kind of do our own research and reading among our own people, hey, you know, where we came from. We came from different tribes. You know, why do I want to hurt a person look like me, think like me? I don't understand why I'm jealous of this person. 